The one memory that stands out the most for me, uh, oddly enough, I, I always think of it, uh, it was sort of one of those lightning bolt moments that you have as a painter. And I was working on a still life, and uh, the still life had uh, a copper uh, lamp in it, one of those old oil lamps, and the dust had settled on top of the lamp. And, uh, you know, I was thinking in my mind, it's a copper lamp, I've got to paint it copper colored, right? But no, the dust had made a sort of a, a green note, color note, uh, that I hadn't anticipated. It was like I could hear the angels singing. It was, it was an unbelievable moment because for the first time, it occurred to me that the mind's eye wants to call something a given color or make it a certain shape without really appreciating what real color it is by seeing it just for what it is, you know, as a shape or a color. So it was, it was kind of a turning point for me at that point. So. Uh, the interesting thing about the way a painter's career develops is there are, there are times when you have a flirtation with a given uh, period in art history. So for a time, for example, I, I was going over to France and I was painting in Claude Monet's gardens in Giverny. So I had this tremendous, uh, the only way to say it is flirtation with this French Impressionist light and color and, and brilliance. And you try to assimilate that into your own work. So what happens is, as you assimilate that, uh, it, you gain new skills. But what inevitably happens is you lose some of the sophistication you had earlier from some other flirtation you had. And, and now your task is to how do you blend those two things together? And then still yet other things come along that you want to experiment and, and assimilate. So I always think of it as like a stew. It, all these various influences go into the pot and then eventually what comes out Ideally, if you're true to yourself, is you come up with something very honest and, and unique because it's your voice, it's nobody else's voice. My favorite part of the art making process is uh, there's the start of a painting, which is very energetic, very free. The application of paint is, is, is very rapidly put on. Uh, I always liken it to you know, paint splattering the walls and the ceilings and the floors because it's just so much fun to just go in there with lots of gusto and get it started. There's an odd period in between that's very difficult uh, at times. As you're developing the forms, you're refining them, it takes a little bit of, uh, it's like a wrestling match is what I liken it to. And once you're done with that really difficult part of it, then there's the finishing process, which is along with the start, one of my favorite periods because that's when you begin to coalesce the whole thing into this very harmonious unit. And, um, and finishing touches are the things that really make it uh, special and separate from, from what it had been all that time. In the largest possible sense, where I draw my inspiration from is nature. And nature with a capital N. And sometimes people assume that when you say nature, you're only talking about trees and streams and clouds. But nature for a painter is more than just that. It's the way light falls in through a window and describes objects. It's the way light would fall across a face. Uh, to me, that is the absolute most thrilling thing to see what light and color and atmosphere does to objects. And uh, to try to record that poetically and uh, truthfully uh, is an experience that's second to none for me.